Hello, my name is Miriam Matalich, and I'm the Outpatient Nutrition Community Educator here at Hogue Hospital. Today we'll be talking about foods to keep your lungs healthy. As far as my objectives go, I'd like to go over the importance of our lungs and why we need to keep them healthy, what factors affect our lung health, I also want to go over the healthy dietary interventions that we can apply daily in our eating regimens. We'll be going over three substances, polyphenols, flavonoids, and anthocyanins. We'll go over the sources of each and the benefits of each. And lastly, we'll go over oh, the overall the uh, best dietary plans for the optimal lung health. And then we'll summarize. So why are our lungs so important? Well, we know that they provide us with oxygen, otherwise known as O2, and we breathe in the oxygen that we need daily for our organs to function. We know that oxygen helps all organisms to grow, to reproduce, and to turn food into energy. We also know that oxygen gives our cells the ability to break down the food in order to get the energy we need to survive. Our lungs also remove carbon dioxide, or otherwise known as CO2, and we exhale this from our bodies. So carbon dioxide is actually a waste product of aerobic respiration. Now aerobic respiration uh, occurs in all of our cells, in all of all the, uh, the different uh, organisms that, we, that are alive. So CO2 must be removed from the body or it can make our blood dangerously acidic. So how do our lungs actually work? Well, very simply in this diagram, we inhale the oxygen that we need for every one of our cells to undergo aerobic respiration. So the oxygen gets used, our lungs fill with, with the oxygen, and as that happens, our diaphragm lowers and our belly expands. Then, without even thinking about it, we exhale, and then we exhale the waste product, the carbon dioxide. Our lungs empty out, the diaphragm actually rises, and our bellies contract. So now, how, how is the health of our lungs affected? What kinds of things can affect the uh, health of our lungs? Well, we know, first of all, that, di that uh, diseases including COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, asthma, lung cancer, pneumonia, pulmonary edema, collapse of the lungs, and bronchitis, just to name a few. Besides diseases, we also have environmental factors, such as air pollution, exposure to unsafe chemicals, and of course, smoking. But what about genetics? How do they play a part? Well, if you have family history of asthma, cystic fibrosis, pulmonary hypertension, and pulmonary vascular disease, just to name a few. So the word pulmonary, you'll see several times during my presentation. And the word pulmonary means that it's related to our lungs. So today we're gonna really talk about how diet can affect our lungs and how we can do the best we can to keep our lungs as, as healthy as possible. So we know from research that diet, if it's low in fruits and vegetables, which we know are, which contain antioxidants, and if our diets are low in iron, calcium, potassium, zinc, folate, vitamin B6, retinol, and niacin. So these diets have been documented in patients with COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. What can we do then? What kind of dietary interventions can we apply in our daily regimens? Well, we're going to talk about these three substances, polyphenols, flavonoids, and anthocyanins. So polyphenols are actually plant compounds that give the fruits and vegetables and berries their vi very vibrant colors. And um, flavonoids is a group of polyphenols, or phytochemicals, and also found in most fruits and vegetables. 
The last one is anthocyanins, and it's a type of flavonoids. So these are all subgroups of the first one. Um, and uh, they, have, they offer several health benefits. I'm going to go over each one of these in detail. So polyphenol is a plant compound, as we mentioned, or also known as a phytonutrient. It gives fruit, such as berries, its wild, vibrant colors, and vegetables, too. It can reduce the risk of diabetes. In addition to helping with our lung health, it can also help uh, reduce uh, heart disease, hypertension, and cancer. And it also may boost bone and brain health. So here we have a diagram of polyphenols, and you can see that they include flavonoids. And flavonoids include the anthocyanins. So here, those are the three we're going to be talking about today. But also it includes um, the uh, isoflavone, flavonones, and flavones. So you'll see that these are just big words. And it doesn't mean that you have to remember all these. Just remember that polyphenols are found in many of the fruits and vegetables that are uh, that contain that are, are you have the vibrant colors that go along with them. So those, those compounds are actually helping to keep us healthy and to keep our lungs healthy. These are also known as antioxidants. The second group, flavonoids, is a group of polyphenols and found in fruits and vegetables. They are well known for their antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects in lowering the risk of many chronic diseases. And you'll see that um, the red, purple, and blue are the ma major colors that we're looking at right now. Not only fruits, but also vegetables. You'll see red cabbage there and uh, purple carrots. <laughs> so in addition to the berries and cherries and grapes and plums. Here we have um, a, another diagram of like flavonoids. And again, these are just, you know, again, these are all the components, different kinds of flavonoids. But you'll see the flavonoids are listed there. <clears throat> and the ones that we just talked about, the, the flavanols, the isoflavones, the anthocyanins, the flavon 3 oles these are all there. And you'll see that there's other types of flavonoids, too, the phenolytic acids, the lignans. These are all there. And you don't have to remember all these, as I mentioned. Just know that if you have a variety of colors of fruits and vegetables, and also other foods that are uh, not fruits and vegetables, you're going to be seeing later on, too, like coffee and grains and things like that. So, But flavonoids are mostly found in fruits and vegetables. So again, here we have the different, the major flavonoids. And you see the different. Um, uh, sources. So the flavanols not only contain fruits and vegetables, but they also contain garbanzo beans and almonds and quinoa, which is a grain. So you'll see the um, onions and apple, kale, these are all listed there. Uh, the flavin three oils uh, contain apples and fruits and vegetables too, but they contain tea, including black tea, green tea, white tea, and oolong tea, and cocoa from our chocolate products there. So um, flavin three oils are there in many different uh, sources of food. The flavones, again, fruits and vegetables, different ones though, parsley, bell peppers, celery, apples, oranges, and also uh, you'll see different melons there, cantaloupe, watermelon, chili peppers, and thyme, which is a spice. So uh, flavonones, the, the last one uh, is basically citrus fruits, you know, we think of oranges, grapefruits, and lemons, but also tomatoes are good sources of flavonones. The last of the three are anthocyanins, and again, this is a type of flavonoid. It slows the decline in lung health associated with aging. So as you know, as we age, um, all of our organs um, decline to some extent, um, some more than others, some faster than others. But we know that anthocyanins can actually slow down the decline in aging in lung health. So you see the anthocyanins, mostly found in the red-blue plant pigments in berries, um, are very, very good sources of, of the anthocyanins. And here you see that there's so many great nutritional benefits to our health from anthocyanins. You see that there's, um, they help our, our nerves, they help our heart, they help with obesity, help keep our, our weight down and to help um, with other risks that, um, uh, other conditions that occur from obesity. Um, also anti-diabetic, antioxidant, and also anti-cancer. So you'll see that these antioxidants are very, very important in, in preventing cancer also. So 
So anti anthocyanins are basically, they have a large spectrum of, great, of, of nutritional benefits. And again, good sources of these are your strawberries, cherries, you know, again, the same colored fruits and vegetables, and uh, also potatoes, purple potatoes. So uh, you'll see a, a variety in these um, there too. Besides the three uh, substances that we just talked about, vitamin C is a, a big factor too in helping our lungs. Um, but besides our lungs, it actually has been found to reduce the health risks to babies that are born of mothers who smoke. We know people that who smoke uh, normally need a uh, higher intake of vitamin C. Um, and so this will really help those mothers too. But vitamin C is good for other, um, uh, other uh, great reasons here. They, uh, uh, the necessity for growth and development and repair of all of our body tissues uh, require vitamin C. Uh, vitamin C also is involved in many body functions such as collagen, um, you know, the formation of collagen, which is the main component of our connective tissue. Vitamin C also helps with the absorption of iron. If we eat something with high, high in vitamin uh, C and iron, that absorption of iron will be increased. Uh, vitamin C also helps, helps in the proper functioning of the immune system, and this is so important in preventing a lot of these um, conditions that we talked about, diabetes, cancer, lung disease. Um, we, we, we really need to keep our immune system going, and vitamin C helps that a lot. It aids in wound healing and also in the maintenance of cartilage, bones, and teeth. So you see vitamin C is, has a very large spectrum of benefits. And again, we think about citrus fruits for vitamin C. We think about, you know, lemons and, and grapefruits and oranges and tangerines. But we forget about the other ones, like green peppers are good sources of vitamin C, strawberries, broccoli, and, pe and sweet potatoes and white potatoes are very good sources of vitamin C. So another word for vitamin C is ascorbic acid, so those can be used interchangeably. So we, we learned a little bit about some fruits and some foods, that vegetables that are good overall to help our lungs and help with other disease entities also. But what about a total program? So the best overall diet plans, and, and you, have, you probably are very familiar with these, the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet. These are the two um, most um, popular diets, and they're good not only to help our lungs keep healthy, but also for our brains, our heart, our kidneys, um, just everything, our weight, diabetes, I mean, it's, they're good for, for all of those um, entities. So we'll, let, we'll go over the, di uh, the Mediterranean diet first, and then we'll go over the DASH program. So the Mediterranean diet uh, basically is primarily plant-based foods. So these are just anything that comes out of the ground, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and nuts. These are very, very uh, much the majority of the, of the diet. We also want to uh, replace the bad fats like butter and saturated fat with healthy fats such as olive oil and canola oil. The Mediterranean diet actually um, wants you to reduce your sodium intake too by using more herbs and spices and that gives a lot of good flavor without adding salt to the foods. Uh, the Mediterranean diet uh, promotes using less red meat, maybe only a few times a month and more fish and poultry at least twice a week. So enjoying meals with family and friends is a very big factor with the Mediterranean diet. It is so, so important to eat with family and friends, people you love. It helps with the digestion, helps you enjoy your meals more, and helps uh, everybody eat better, eat healthier when you're doing it together and you know you're doing it the best uh, way for your health. Uh, also, uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, alcohol. And drinking red wine is optional in the Mediterranean diet, and, but we say in moderation. So it, moderation means that for a woman, uh, one glass of wine, red, uh, red wine, uh, four ounces or less. And for men, no more than two glasses, four ounces or less. So that's what they mean mo in um, moderation. Um, and also the Mediterranean diet, why I really love this program is that it does promote getting plenty of exercise. And this is so important because it's not only what you eat, it's your exercise, um, who you eat with, how you feel when you're eating, how your meals are prepared, the choices you make. And these are all very, very important in keeping our lungs healthy and keeping our brains, our heart, our kidneys, um, and our whole bodies healthy. 
Here we have a, a pyramid. It's called the Mediterranean uh, Diet Pyramid. And you'll see on the top, the at the uh, point there, meat, which is very small. <laughs> and uh, it just means like maybe two or three times a month for red meat. And then as we get to the weekly part, uh, then we increase more frequently the fish, seafood, poultry, eggs, sweets, uh, more frequently, um, maybe a couple times during the week for those um, also. Then when we get to the daily part, of course, then you can have more of your whole grain breads and cereals, your, um, your fruits and vegetables, legumes, nuts, all of your plant-based foods. Um, the olive oil, again, the better fats rather than the, the saturated fats. Uh, cheese and yogurt, the dairy is included there, but we do want to push for more of the, no, the non-fat and the low-fat dairy there too. And of course, as I mentioned before, um, one of the great aspects of the Mediterranean diet is the fact that daily physical activity is so important. And when I say that, it's important to check with your own physicians to see that the physical activity that you are doing is healthy and safe for you. We talked a little bit about wine in moderation, and of course, drinking a lot of water is so important in our digestion. Uh, rem you know, remember our bodies are mostly made of water, <laughs> so we have to make sure that we're drinking a lot of water and fluids to help with, the, with all the different reactions that go in our body to help us with our health and to, and to promote um, a good feeling and uh, to, to lower the risk of many of these um, disease entities. The DASH diet is a second program, and it's so, so similar to the Mediterranean diet. Um, DASH is an acronym that means uh, Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. And um, so it's, it's an eating plan that was uh, you know, researched by the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. And they've shown with this program that uh, the DASH program really can lower the blood pressure and improve your levels of cholesterol and reducing, of course, your risk of getting heart disease. So not only is it good for your lungs, good for your heart, and if we're talking about good for your heart, anything that's good for your heart is good for your brain. So all of these are very, very important in remembering uh, and keeping our whole body healthy. So here we go. It emphasizes, the DASH diet emphasizes vegetables and fruits, fat-free or low-fat dairy products. Uh, we do want to push for more of the whole grains, uh, fish, poultry, beans, seeds, nuts, and vegetable oils, the unsaturated fats, those are we're talking about. And of course, we want to limit sodium because we're really, the focus of the DASH diet is to lower the, the blood pressure, and that is important that we don't use a lot of sodium because that can raise blood pressure, uh, salty foods and things like that. So you want to lower sodium, you want to lower sweets, sugary beverages, and of course, red meats, just like the Mediterranean diet did. Uh, the DASH diet also um, promotes healthy life changes, and that means to lower your blood pressure by staying at a healthy weight, exercising, and of course not smoking. So the DASH diet, this is like a pie graph, and you'll see just like the Mediterranean that the majority, the two larger portions in this graph are the uh, whole grains, breads and cereals, and again, we want to use the high fiber. We have different kinds of fiber. We have, high, uh, we have the soluble fiber and the insoluble fiber, and you want to have a variety of both. Um, the fruits and vegetables, you'll see the different colored fruits and vegetables that contain the polyphenols, the flavonoids, and the uh, anthocyanins that we talked about earlier. Uh, the next groups, the, the next uh, larger groups, are the um, uh, low-fat dairy products and fat-free, and of course your lean protein, your, uh, your lean, your white meat uh, chicken, uh, white meat turkey, um, you know, very, very little red meats, of course that is going to be in the very small group there. And of course, uh, fats and sweets are the smallest group there too. So again, including all of these um, in the right portions and um, using your uh, exercise not smoking, drinking your water, limiting your um, alcohol, same kind of things as the uh, Mediterranean diet. So we, we saw some of the good things um, that we need to, uh, good foods that we want to use on a regular basis to keep our lungs healthy and to keep um, all the rest of our bodies healthy too. But some of the bad things include too much alcohol. So we're talking about not only wine, but other alcohol. Like say if you have um, hard liquor, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's one, one ounce, one and a half ounces per per a drink, so no more than one or two a day on that, because um, that can affect <coughs> your lungs also. Processed meats, um, again, they contain nitrates, fat, sodium, cholesterol, um, uh, 
the saturated fats, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and this can increase your uh, risk of several diseases, not only heart disease, but it can affect your lungs and your kidneys uh, and your brains. Um, and again, these are just not, not good for any, any of the um, diseases that you want, to, you want to, uh, to lower the risk of. You want to use uh, non-processed meats. You want to use fresh meats, lean meats. Uh, the sugary drinks, again, uh, these are not good for, any, for anybody, actually, because not only do, do they increase bronchitis and asthma in lungs, but, you know, the extra sugar can lead to obesity, which can lead to other disease entities like um, diabetes and heart disease and cancer and that type of thing. So, again, you want to reduce the sugary drinks. And, of course, we talked about the salt. You want to reduce your sodium. Um, salt is made of sodium and chloride, and of course sodium is the part of the salt we want to watch out for. You want to limit the sodium to, uh, from 1,000 to 2,300 milligrams a day. Uh, you, want to, you want to lower your risk of bronchitis because they say here that sodium, there's been evidence that it can re re increase the risk of bronchitis. So 2,300 milligrams a day, just to give you an idea, that's one level teaspoon of salt. So if you're adding salt to your foods, remember you have sodium in your foods naturally. And um, just like the foods on, your on the lower left hand there, there's a lot of uh, processed meats and things like this, and that, that has a lot of sodium in it. So um, your condiments have a lot of sodium. Uh, fruits and vegetables really don't have very much at all as far as sodium, but processed foods you do. And, um, and again, adding any extra salt is going to raise your risk for um, problems with your lungs, your heart, your kidneys your brain, um, that type of thing. So you really want to watch out for that. So in summary, we, we've talked about the good choices, the vibrant colored fruits and vegetables. They contain the three major um, uh, phytochemicals, phytonutrients, if you will. The, these are called your phen uh, polyphenols, your flavonoids, and your anthocyanins. And again, you don't have to remember all these words. Just have a variety, different color fruits and vegetables, and include some of the other foods that are listed there, too. We talked about um, even some of your grains have these in there, too. Um, so include those. And your low-fat and fat-free dairy products, this will lower your lung cancer risk also because we know that we, there's evidence that a high-fat diet can raise the risk of cancer, too. So to lower your lung cancer risk, you want to use more of the low-fat uh, and fat-free dairy products. And we also know that these are anti-inflammatory. So again, you want to use these. Um, lean meats, fish, poultry, nuts, and seeds. Uh, it's good for your lungs and they're heart healthy. Uh, beans, peas, and lentils, good for your lungs and heart healthy. Um, and of course, your whole grains are, are great because they have antioxidant properties and anti-inflammatory, which helps reduce the risk of, of many diseases. Uh, coffee uh, actually contains polyphenols, and I think that was in one of the pictures there. You, there very little, you can see the coffee beans there, but um, it's an antioxidant too and anti-inflammatory. So uh, make sure that you uh, talk to your physician about coffee because um, there's different um, uh, information out there about coffee, different research that it's good, but too much is not good. Too much of anything is not good. So just talk to your doctor and see if, if that might be something that you should have and how much you should have per day. If you're watching your caffeine, if you're watching um, um, you know, problems, maybe you have some GI, gastrointestinal problems, and you can't have coffee. So just, you know, coffee is not for everybody, but just, you know, make sure that you talk to your physician first. Okay, so now we're going to open up to questions, and I want to thank you so much for, for uh, being involved today and uh, watching this program, and I'll open up to questions. Do we have any? You don't have any questions today. Okay, well, I want to wish you all a great Thanksgiving holiday, and I hope that you, um, with all the cooking and preparation you do, that you try to incorporate the Mediterranean diet and DASH diets um, in keeping your heart. But again, it's the same program for lungs, for heart, your brain. So I hope you have a great holiday. And again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.